Please welcome White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre. Good afternoon, everyone. It's hard to follow a performance like that. The St. Augustine Gospel Choir. Let's give it up one more time. They were amazing. I'm feeling really inspired today. Just look around. There's so much black, black excellence here today. Give it up. Just think about it. Hundreds of black leaders on the South Lawn of the White House who exemplify black excellence. And it's because we have a president who wanted to bring us all together to lift up our accomplishments. So, you know, I think we probably should do this every month. What do you guys think? I'll talk to the boss about that one. <laughs> so we're all here because we have a president and a vice president who have proven that they are committed to investing in the future of black communities. This administration has done the work. President Biden, Vice President Harris didn't talk the talk, they walked the walk. But I wanna take a moment to talk about the president that I know. As the first black, openly queer White House press secretary, and I gotta add, a proud Haitian American. For those who don't know, I can tell you that representation matters to him. Our voices matter to him. Our perspectives matter to him, and our success in our community matters to him. I wanna share a quick story with you. Last year, I took a question in the briefing room from a young black girl who was visiting the White House to, uh, to, to, to take questions for me in the briefing room, and it was take your child to work day. I could tell she was a little nervous, but she quickly composed herself and asked her question, what's the most difficult part about my job? And told me that she was inspired or aspired to be in my shoes one day. This moment reinforced for me that representation matters. It matters to our kids and makes our nation stronger. Walking through the White House and having an office in the West Wing will never get old for me. It's truly the honor of a lifetime for me. But what really inspires me as a mom who is raising a young black girl is walking through the White House and seeing people who look like me, seeing people who look like us. We have some of those leaders right here today and I'm gonna shout them out. There's some of my favorite people here at the White House. Mayor Benjamin. Shalanda Young. Brenda Mallory. And Shawanza Goff. And that's just to name a few, guys. It's just to name a few. I'm just really proud, truly proud, to work for the most diverse administration in our nation's history. Because we know when we fill spaces that, was, that once kept us out, we can make progress. When we show up and make our voices heard, we make progress. And when we have a seat at the table, we make progress. And that progress under this administration is undeniable, folks. It is undeniable. Under President Biden and Vice President Harris's leadership, black Americans are starting new businesses, creating jobs, 
buying homes and pursuing educational opportunities at historic rates. This is a real progress worth celebrating. And that progress would not be possible without the contributions of the leaders that are here today. Trust me, President Biden and Vice President Harris understand our community. And they understand stakes for it. We have a president and a vice president who understand that when black students succeed, our nation succeeds. We have a president and a vice president who know democracy only thrives when voting is protected and celebrated. We have a president and a vice president who have fought for criminal justice reform and are still fighting to ensure fair and impartial justice for all. And we have a president and a vice president who are committed to protecting black history as American history. As President Biden said, our history is not just about the past. It's about the present. It's about our future. And whether or not that future includes us, all of us, not just some of us. So today, we celebrate the historic achievements this president has accomplished alongside our community. And tomorrow, we get back to work because we all know the most important thing, the vice president and the president knows this, there is more work to be done. Now, before you leave here today, before you leave the White House, we invite you to take a flower from your table to commemorate this very, very special day, this historic day. Thank you all. Distinguished guests, please welcome Trell Thomas. Wow, life comes at you fast. Let me just do a temperature check real quick. God is good? All and all the time? Okay, I just had to make sure I'm in the right place. I'm Trail Thomas from Cassis, South Carolina. Yeah. A small town filled with people with big hearts. My mom, who is here today, is one of those people. Hi, Mom. Hey, Dad. <laughs> I can still hear the sounds of laughter that came from our kitchen on most Sundays in our modest home. There will be family, friends, neighbors, church members, and sometimes even strangers who needed a good home-cooked meal. In fact, those Sunday meals bring back lots of warm memories. It was the first place I got to see and feel the joy of being a black person. Today, I get to share that joy with you all. From my mom's house to the south lawn of the White House. Spaces like this are so important. Spaces that uplift us, that celebrate us, and that give us our well-deserved flowers. I've dedicated myself to building and preserving those spaces. As you all know, curating an atmosphere for our community to feel seen and express ourselves freely isn't always accepted in all places. So I want to say a personal thank you to President Biden for seeing and investing in them and for seeing and investing in us. We are in a remarkable moment in time, a moment where black women have been appointed to some of the highest offices in the land. Hello, Hello Madam Vice President. Hello, Madam Supreme Court Justice. In fact, even this stage today is filled with remarkable black women. Speaking of that, let's bring out some more excellence to honor this moment. It is my pleasure to introduce the first black woman to oversee the federal government's budget on behalf of the president, director, all right, she got some fans in here, <laughs> director of office management and budget, Shalonda Young, actress, 
producer, my loved one, Marseille Martin, and with them, a man who needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and help me welcome the President of the United States of America. <laughs> continue this Black Excellency Party. Uh, it's an honor, honor to be with you today to celebrate. I'm Shalonda Young, for those of you who are not screaming uh, my name. <laughs> Mr. President, those are your Congressional Black Caucus members who before I worked for you, I was with them for 15 years, uh, so. They know who doles out the money. <laughs> uh, I'm the member of President Biden's cabinet, his budget director. The president likes to say I'm the money lady. I think you'd like to do this when you uh, refer to me. And I'm the first black woman to do it. I think that matters. And I want to thank the president personally, I don't think I ever have, for letting this little black girl from Clinton, Louisiana, get to show that black people deserve to be in all the spaces. So thank you so much. I'm also the fruit of generations who poured all they had into me. And most of you out there can say the same thing. And they taught me what black excellency was, uh, and it's how I was expected to live. Most importantly, I'm a mother of an almost three-year-old, Miss Charlie, a young black girl. And I hope even when she's a teenager, she rolls her eyes already. So pray for me. But teenage Charlie, I hope that she remembers walking through these halls and what that means and what is expected of her and that she takes the black excellence and she brings it to the next generation. The president likes to tell people, including me, especially me, don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. <laughs> Trust me, he means those words. He puts his money where his mouth is. When he talks about value, it's more than economic value of something. He sees the inherent dignity and value of people all around our country and the inherent excellence which is why when I oversee the budget, I work to ensure that we invest in people and places that will ensure the next generation of black excellence. I oversee a $7 trillion budget. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for trusting me. Now I know $7 trillion sounds like a lot, but I wanna explain how those investments look. It means that a small rural community like the one I grew up in in Clinton, Louisiana, a town of under 2,000 people, that explains the accent, is finally seeing critical investments from their government, such as broadband internet. And I can tell you firsthand, I went home, Mr. President, and saw my almost 96-year-old grandmother who has internet, who has internet in Clinton, Louisiana. We couldn't figure out the password because she couldn't remember it. But it's there when somebody can remember what it is to reset it. And believe it or not, in 2024, this president and vice president are still fighting to make sure people have adequate sewer and water infrastructure. It means that this administration can ensure that the government show up in places that have been left behind. For black Americans and communities, this also means historic federal investments in our HBCUs, new economic opportunities, and good paying jobs in black communities, and lower health care and child care costs. Let me tell you, I get that. 
because we know what it means when a family gets a slot to a Head Start program. It means parents have the room to invest in their children and see their dreams come to life. What do you say, Mr. President? People just want a little breathing room. That's what he's led us to focus on. That's what budgets are about. As a point of personal privilege, I just want to say that I'm incredibly proud to work for President Biden, Vice President Harris, who have fought relentlessly to create opportunity, advance equity, and fight for families. As a short example of the importance of Family First by the President, last summer I was on my last leg doing a little deal around the debt ceiling, Mr. President. One afternoon I was in a meeting with you, and at this point I've gone weeks without spending much time with the kid. I had no laundry and I was hanging on literally by a thread. The meeting was going a little long, but I knew I needed to sneak out to get my child from daycare because they charge $5 a minute if you are late. And that $7 trillion is a US government budget, not my personal budget, so every minute counts. So I started to back up quietly, and you go, where are you going? And I said, well, I guess now I'm going to go call somebody to pick up Charlie. And without skipping a beat, you said, well, bring over here. My mind immediately went to the damage I knew my child would do to the Resolute desk. <laughs> so I did not take you up on that offer. But I could not do this job if you didn't tell all of us, if it's about your family, go home. <laughs> the President's graciousness and understanding in that moment was incredibly important to me as a mother. And the reason I'm able to do this job is because this president and this vice president put family first. With your help, we have made historic gains and the future looks good. I look forward to accomplishing more together. We have lots of work to do. And now it's my great, great honor to introduce someone I've been watching since you were wee high. Uh, to introduce award-winning actress and producer, Marseille Martin. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Look where we are. Oh, my gosh. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be here at the White House for the celebration of black excellence. I see so many faces in the audience that I have admired and respected. So hi, Kyla. Hi, we got Kyla Bradtap with the brown in the house. Oh my goodness. And I have to start by thanking President Biden and Dr. Jill Biden for the warm invitation to this historic occasion. And yeah, I'm Marseille Martin. And I've been an actor since I was the age of five. A lot of you may remember me as Diane from Blackish, <laughs> uh, where I was nine years old when I joined that show. And man, 10 years later, over 10 years since I'm now 20, it's safe to say that that role has been a huge part of my life and my journey into adulthood. But listen, as I grew, I also realized that my voice wasn't just valuable in front of the camera, but behind it as well. At the age of 10, I sat alongside my parents, who are also in the building, Joshua and Carol Martin. I don't know where they are. Shout out to them. We all pitched my first feature film to Universal at 13. At 13, I became the youngest executive producer in Hollywood history with my film. And that was a pivotal moment for me. It was a moment that I truly realized that I had the responsibility to be a role model and advocate for change creating stories that represent us, our culture, and our excellence. And that movie in particular is a movie about a leader who goes back and learns from her younger self and decides to change her character flaws. Luckily for all of us, the leaders of our country, President Biden and Vice President Harris, have led with the right character of values throughout their careers. President Biden was the youngest guy in the Senate when he won his seat at the age of 29. And for over 50 years, he has devoted his life to public service, the American people, and civil rights. 
One of the projects I'm most proud of, of the latest, is Say Summer Cookout, which is a festival I created to bring together HBCU students, artists, and creators. And it's not just about having a good time, because we do that at the cookout, but it's more about celebrating black excellence and building a legacy. And Vice President Kamala Harris, a proud HBCU graduate, knows a thing or two about that. So go Bisons. <laughs> The Biden and Harris administration has also invested 18 billion into HBCUs and young black people. 18 billion with a B, y'all. <laughs> Showing a real commitment to our future leaders. And while I'm proud of my work, my family and my friends mean everything to me. They've been my backbone, always reminding me to take care of myself, both mentally and physically. And that's something I really appreciate about the Biden and Harris administration as well. They've been champions for reproductive rights, ensuring that we all are taken care of in every single way. And on a personal note, I've had my own health challenges, like when I had my surgery for an ovarian cyst, knowing we all have leaders who care about making healthcare accessible and protecting our rights is something that brings me comfort. It's that kind of leadership that ensures that the next generation of black women like me and like all of us can thrive. And to the parents here today, I want to speak directly to y'all. I was once that young girl from Dallas, Texas, D-Town, Texas in the house. <laughs> I was once that young girl with dreams that felt bigger than life itself. And I know how much it matters to parents who believe in those dreams. And no matter how imp impossible they might seem, my parents have always believed in me. Whew. My parents have always believed in me. When I said I wanted to start a production company at 13, and that belief in their support and that love has carried me through every challenge I have faced so far. So to the parents raising young black girls and boys with big ambitions, please, please keep supporting them and pushing them forward because they're, they're the future leaders. They are the future leaders we are looking to. Black excellence isn't just something we celebrate today. It's something we live every day by creating spaces, opportunities, and legacies that will last for generations. And I'm part, and I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of this movement. And I'm excited to see where we're headed next. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce the President of the United States, Joseph Biden. Good afternoon, and welcome. Welcome to the first ever White House brunch to in celebration of black excellence. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Marseille, thank you for that introduction. You just shared something that so many of us uh, can relate to. My dad taught me, and I mean this, my sister was here earlier today. Our dad taught us that family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. It's everything. And thank you and to all the participants of St. Augustine Choir, Gospel Choir. Are they still here? Give them a round of applause. They've been with me. They've been with me since I was Vice President. Terrell Thomas, thank you for creating space for fellowship and community, kid. Grammy Award-winning singer Monica Hu will perform shortly, I might add. And I want to thank you for our renowned chef, Kwame, and the amazing food you're eating. Or get to, I hope you got to eat it, or will eat it. And thank you, Shalon and Kareen, for part of the most diverse administration in American history that taps into the full talents of our nation. I made a commitment. My administration would look like America, and it does. I want to stay, take a moment to say something like so many Americans, like Kareen, as he pointed out, a proud Haitian American. 
community that's under attack in our country right now. Simply wrong. There's no place in America. This has to stop what he's doing. It has to stop. Now, thank you all for being here in this historic day. Today, recognize that this nation would not exist and this is literal, without the blood, sweat, and tears, without the determination, dreams, and contributions of black Americans. That's a fact. This place wouldn't exist. It's a fitting event during this fantastic Congressional Black Caucus Week. All the members of the Black Caucus that are here today, stand up. I want to see you all. Come on. They're the best. I wanted to host this lunch for a few reasons. First, to show my personal gratitude. Growing up, I'd walk into the kitchen of my grandpa's house in Scranton, and he and the adults would be having a conversation about what's going on in the neighborhood, what's going on in the world, and they'd let me sit down. I got involved in public life because of civil rights when I moved from Scranton to Delaware, which was segregated by law. Throughout my career, I'd attend morning mass at my Catholic church and then attend Sunday services at the AME Church in Wilmington, planning the desegregation efforts in my state that had been segregated by law. You know, I'd be home for our own Sunday dinners. Those conversations, those sermons shaped who I became. The bottom line is, the black community has always had my back, and I've always had yours. So thank you for all you've taught me. Thank you for all the love you've extended to me. I also want to host this brunch because we have progress to celebrate. Together, we're making the most significant investment in black America in all of American history. We've centered racial equity as the center of everything we do. With your help, in just three and a half years, we've created over Two million new black jobs for black, black Americans and black. <laughs> By the way, the next black job to be filled is as president of the United States of America. All right, watch me. We have the lowest black unemployment rate on record. More black Americans have health care than any time in history. Historic $18 billion to HBCUs. Everybody said, why am I doing that? Anyone in HBCU is qualified to do anything we need to be done in America, but you don't have the endowments. They don't have the laboratories. They don't have all the things. Now they do. More than 4 million people receive student debt relief under my plan, a significant number of whom are black borrowers. The racial wealth gap is the smallest in 20 years removing poisonous lead pipes in every American, every American pipe in America, lead pipes, so that people can drink clean water without brain damage. We're delivering high-speed, affordable internet to every American, which today is as essential as electricity was when FDR delivered it in his term. On this very lawn, in front of a White House built by enslaved people, we hosted the first ever Juneteenth concert after I made Juneteenth a federal holiday. And on this lawn, we celebrated the first black woman appointed to the United States Supreme Court, a best decision I made, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. And today, we honor a long line of patriots throughout our history, throughout our history, who made the promise of America real for all Americans. All of you, all of you has pushed us forward to be a country that we say we are. We say we're a country that values freedom, justice, equality, and dignity for all. Today, we honor this simple truth. Black history is American history. Black excellence is American excellence. And folks, we don't erase history like others are trying to. We make history. I know it because I've seen it. I've been vice president of the first black president in American history a president to the first black vice president, and God willing, to the first female black president in American history. <clears throat> Kamala wanted to be here today, but she's traveling. She couldn't be here. But she's always there with us. We'll always be there for her. On this day, we celebrate black excellence. Let us remember 
History is in our hands. It's literally in our hands. The power to drive positive change is in our hands. The future is in our hands. It really is. As if you go to my Oval Office, you see I have a whole wall on both sides of Frederick Douglass, about paintings of Frederick Douglass. He said, if there's no struggle, there's no progress. Well, Lord knows we've been struggling. But there's been progress, and there's excellence. And that's all of you. We just have to remember who we are. We keep forgetting. We're the United States of America. There is nothing beyond our capacity, nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. I'm sorry I can't stay longer, but I'm hosting a second consequential event today at the White House. The, the, great, the Prime Minister of Great Britain asked me to come and see me. He's on his way here, and I'm going to be seeing him shortly. So I'm not going to be able to stick around with you a long time. But I want to say, God bless you all. We're changing America for all Americans, not just black Americans, for all Americans, for Hispanic Americans, for all Americans. Folks, this is who we are. Let's remember. I get so tired of the other guy talking about we're a failing nation. We are the greatest nation in the history of the world. That's a fact. And you're making it greater, and there's nothing going to stop us. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm this way. I'm here. All right. Enjoy the day.